everyone, and welcome back to the Triforce podcast. Thank you for joining us. We made here. it. Yeah. Uh, it's 2022. We, One we've more time. An, yeah. Another year uh, done. Another Dusted, year over. Chalk that one up. Turn the page. Another one just begun. Yeah. On a new horizon. Yeah. yeah. Um, Perian. Yes. How are you feeling? You feeling? You feeling good? Feeling very good. I've had a. I've had a good week. It's just been a, yeah. just one of those weeks where decent things happened. It was all very, very chill. Uh, the kids that went back to school, but it, prior to that, you know, we had a, a nice time uh, chilling out. They were very relaxed. I think they had a really good Christmas. Good. We saw the new saw the new Spider Man movie, which was really good. Really enjoyed it. Um, Amazing. Watched the Hawkeye miniseries on Disney Plus, which was what mash. <laughs> Sadly, not. No, oh. this is Hawkeye, as in uh, Hawkeye Pierce, not Hawkeye. Pierce. Not Hawkeye Pierce. No, this was Hawkeye. <laughs> Man, from the uh, like, why, where's the Mash reboot in 2022? That's I know, what I like know. for real. I, I think it. Like we, I was talking about this on stream, oddly enough, the other day about the Korean War, and pretty much the only thing that I can think of, and I'm sure we'll have some some responses to this. The only piece of media I can think of that really covers the Korean War is Mash. Yeah, I and think I, so. Yeah, I think that's it. Like I'm sure there have been some movies here and there, but but nothing major. It is often called the Forgotten War because it was incredibly violent. It was the Korean yeah. War. Like it was not just a little skirmish. It was it was it like was a full on battles full scale, and all sorts. Yeah. Yeah. It was horrible. Ah, uh, speaking of which, sorry, I, I realize this is a diverting. I know you were about to ask Sips how his week was, but you guys play Hearts of Iron. I'm sure many of our viewers play Hearts of Iron. Yeah, and, I've played it before, yeah. And speaking of the Korean War, I started reading the other day, for no real reason, about the Second Italo-Ethiopian War. Which, right. if anyone's ever played Hearts of Iron, yes. the, the, the Ethiopian War, if you play as Italy... Is one of the very first things you it's do. The first thing it's on you your do, focus yeah. tree. Yeah. Have, do you know much about the actual events of the Second Italo-Ethiopian War? No, not I. I don't know I, anything I feel, about I it. I feel like this is the tail end of colonialism. I.e., back in slightly between the two wars, we still had elements of Africa. It was largely under the control of France and the UK and. Belgium had a bit, Germany had a bit, it, everyone in Europe had a little bit yeah. of Africa that they sort of had as their, I think it was even like a possession, you know, it wasn't yeah. even, it was It was still full on colonialism. It was. And it, I mean, the Belgians really... had bits, that, yeah, like you said, like everybody just seemed to have nabbed little little chunks here and there of Italy. Um, but but the, the Italian-Ethiopian war is really, really interesting. Let me just pique your interest a tiny bit by okay. talking okay. about, um, first of all, I didn't know this, the Italians were kind of pissed off with what Germany was planning with Austria. I think the, this is the Anschluss of Austria, where they just said, well, Austria is basically part of Germany. That's what it says in Hoy, right? Yeah. yeah. So, the, right. So the Italians were not best pleased about that because it did mean putting the Nazis right on their border. Um, and they were kind of against it and everything. So as revenge for that, the Germans actually armed the Ethiopians in this war, which I didn't know. I thought that was really interesting. The, the casualties were, this was a brutal war. About <laughs> 377,000 Ethiopians died and about 10,000 Italian troops, 44,000 wounded, uh, and a whole bunch of them subsequently got wounded and sick of 144,000 and another 10,000. So it was just like 200,000 civilian casualties, about just under 400,000 civilians were, were killed, they reckon. Um, so yeah, it's pretty unbelievable. But listen to this. This is um, the, the, the foreign mercenaries that the Ethiopians got in on their side. All right, they, they have like four planes, okay, four. That was the Ethiopian Air Force. And they had these, this French pilot came over to basically handle the planes with a couple of other lads. But listen to the, listen to the mercenary forces that joined the Ethiopians. French pilot Pierre Corriger, Trinidad, <laughs> Trinidadian pilot Hubert Julien. Oh, nice. And a, an official Swedish military mission under Captain Viking Tam. Nice. The white Russian Fyodor Konovalov and the Czechoslovak writer Adolf Palasak several Austrian Nazis, a team of Belgian fascists, and the Cuban mercenary Alejandro Del Valle. I mean, I'm just like, this is like a Wes Anderson movie. Like, I could just imagine this disparate group of lads turning up. It's yeah. just amazing. Like, all, I just love the fact- all giving chocolates to each other in like perfectly beautifully wrapped boxes with uh, with like harpsichord music playing in the yeah. background. Yeah. And ju- just as they're about to go into battle, Hubert Julien says to says to Pierre Corriguet, you know, you, you never gave me the money back from the toll. You know, some some yeah. minor conversation that they have yeah, like yeah. that. But yeah, I just thought it was really 
I just love that idea that they, this force, but the the Ethiopian yeah, interesting. the Ethiopian forces were very very poorly armed. So like the, this was Haile Selassie's message to his to, to the people of Ethiopia when the Italians invaded. All men and boys able to carry a spear go to Addis Ababa. Every married man will bring his wife to cook and wash for him. Every unmarried man will bring any unmarried woman he can find to cook and wash for him. Wow. Women with babies, the blind, and those who aged and infirm to carry a spear are excused. Anyone else found at home after you've seen this order will be hanged. Jesus. And a, a shitload of lads turned Jesus up because you would. I know. So these lads turned up what and some of them literally had. Message. I know. Just saying, you better fucking turn up. Can you but imagine if Winston Churchill did that? <laughs> yeah, imagine that. I mean, this imagine was a, they did that nowadays. It was about so. that time. Get your vaccine, or if we find out you haven't, we're going to come to your house and hang you <laughs> we're gonna in front of your neighbors. Yeah. Come and get a vaccine. If you're married, bring your wife. <laughs> if you're not, you need to find a find random a woman. unmarried woman <laughs> to cook and clean for you. It's just incredible. Oh, that's but, nuts. Uh, but lots of the forces just literally had spears or bows and arrows. Um, but they like they they did all like the Italians uh, did not do very well. Like this was this should have been a walkover for them, but because the like the Italian army was not that bad. Like they were quite poorly equipped, but the men yeah. were ready to fight. They were like they they wanted to fight, but they were the leaders were awful. And but Mussolini was insane, obviously. Uh, and and the the sort of command chain. In, in the Italian armor was very, very poor. So a lot of v bad right. decisions, misinformation, but the Ethiopians still had runners. That was their form of communication between units. They had to get a lad oh and run God. him between units. Of course and, they did. And yeah. there were still some occasions, They like the Italian tanks turned up, and the, the Ethiopians just rolled boulders in front of and behind the tank, so, so it couldn't go anywhere. The Ethiopia just have this long uh, tradition of running under any circumstance, then, because they always win medals at the Olympics yeah. and stuff too, They're right? Great runners, so yeah. Well, they, like, I, mean, I think it's because the the conditions that they train in are are so harsh that like when when they go to another country where the conditions are a bit more favorable for running long distances they're like well this is a piece of cake like uh, <laughs> and running that. in a desert with like uh like uh, tires for shoes for like 10 years practicing like yeah the, the rest of this is really easy so this of is simple. most of the ethiopian fighters wore a white cotton cloak which proved to be an excellent target yeah oh my gosh man, how oh awful man. uh Really bad. That's wild, but, uh, eh? but some of the the reports of the, the the battles that they had and stuff were just crazy. But there were a lot of massacres uh, when the Italians finally took Addis Ababa. They killed like thirty thousand people, they estimate. Uh, but equally, a lot of the time when the Italian forces got caught, they were castrated by the Ethiopians as a kind of uh, revenge. I mean, th this was I'd never ever read about this war. I assumed, no. having played Hearts of Iron, yeah. the Italians turned up and just won. But this was brutal. And like it went on and on and on for There's quite some time. There's a lot of little time. things. I mean, it was such a such a, a vast conflict and, and encapsulated so many nations of the world over such a long period of time. There's always going to be little bits and pieces that you've never come across oh, or you've, yeah. you've never read up on or whatever. I mean, there's... Yeah, I mean, like the Spanish Civil War led into the World War Yeah, World like I don't... Well. I don't it's not really considered part of World War Two, is it? But it's sort of definitely so close to it. Yeah, yeah and like... it had ramifications for um, for the or could have had uh, serious ramifications for for the war had it gone the other way and stuff like that. So I think yeah. that's why it's 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 often mentioned. And I mean, around the same time too, like or or just before. So yeah, it, it gets lumped in. But um, and I mean, it's all really interesting. Like uh, you read up on a lot of this stuff and uh the other thing that's interesting about the time as well is that uh a lot of it is a lot of it was was chronicled at the time but a lot of it is going back and speaking to people who are are now gone because uh, obviously it happened so long ago that most veterans uh, or people that were involved in in any way in in that war or have, have passed away either died in the war or you know have just died um in in their later years sort of thing but uh, you got you got to wonder if all of the accounts are like uh, necessarily true. You know, I think there's definitely some um, you know like ro romanticization of, of of some of the stuff, right? Like certainly you see it like in the movies and some of the right. books that have been written since and and stuff. You know, like I don't know if all the the accounts are like a hundred percent accurate, but at the same time, it it makes it all more <laughs> interesting, right? Because well, that's, it's like, yeah. 
It's like I mean, all a time history, piece, right? Though, yeah. In a, in a nutshell, right? Yeah. Like history is often hundreds. Well, it used to be certainly in Roman times. You know, even the the, the best sources we have, the most sort of accurate historians yeah. who were kind of supposed to be neutral points of view. Like there was this one quite famous Greek historian who wasn't a Greek. He was, I think, he was from a different country, and he came to Greece and he kind of sort of tried to write down the histories of the ro- of the of the wars and the Roman times as well. Had a couple of these philosoph philosopher phil phil philosopher historians yeah i can't say it philosophical Um, yeah but they they were kind of they they were kind of tried to write their histories up as best they could but they're obviously biased by hundreds of years Uh, they're they're they're, they're writing these histories down hundreds of years after they happen and for an audience that have political motivations or yes you know people at the time who want to trumpet a certain thing you know if you want to frame or you know i mean obviously after the ethiopian italian war i'm sure a lot of that was in order to keep Mussolini in power and then afterwards touted as this big success you know there's 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 definitely this war these things are used and the history is written and shared and 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 all the all the atrocities are, are hidden and I think it's harder to do that in the modern world. Yeah. But instead, we have this more sceptical outlook of did this actually happen like that? You know, we right. do have more questioning. You know, I think yeah. I think that I think it's, it's bizarre. It's interesting. It is bizarre that we question fact more yeah. when it's much easier to record as true and and show evidence for things. Yeah. It is that is interesting. The older stuff gets, the less we question it. You know, as well to some yeah. extent. And sometimes the older the stuff, the sources we're looking at, the more we should question it. You know, some of these historical characters who certainly we sort of almost like mother Teresa. you know it almost feels like you know not the you know she she was she, it became this sort of idea that she was universally good when obviously i think cast in a modern light i think she's she's not not very good no um, i mean that's like sort of come to light more recently that but potentially she wasn't as as nice but as like Haley selassie you know I, I didn't know he said that but that that but i i always thought he was a kind of a hero i guess um well you know, maybe, maybe certainly... at the time but i mean like uh controversially i think at a time hitler was seen as a bit of a hero as well right like it's the circumstance obviously after the fact you look at it and you think well no that he's like a he's he's an, a madman but uh, i mean you know people supported him in the beginning right and he was still insane then too you know what i mean so like it's yeah. it's it's the context of the time right like he was saying sort of the right things but nobody realized how nuts he was going to be you know as he was as saying that sort of the right on. things to the people of nazi germany yeah just, to the people who clarify, were in, in, <laughs> we're in not it, saying no that yeah. the joy voice podcast no looked at some of wait, his early stuff was good you know it's not no. like a band <laughs> but i mean this is this is a thing that happens often in history like you know people who are loud and insane are are, are listened to a lot right like uh you know people listen to like Idi Amin and um you know all, all all of these all of these people who then turned out to just be absolutely batshit insane and dangerous and you know evil or whatever true um it's uh I think at it's a, a weird one point, isn't it? we need in history though it's just in the same way that um with that with trials um you know once someone is found guilty in a trial they did it right that yeah. is it's understood that 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 is now history yeah you know that, that it can be written down as fact yeah <laughs> it, it, in a sense um because that's what we've all agreed to yeah. record as history. You know, I think I think that we have this system in place which lets us have closure, um, or at least at least historical closure. Right? We can't we can't be umming and erring about every single little decision. Sometimes these things need to just be the con- the consensus is that this happened, and we're yeah. going to report this as yeah. fact. Um, here's here's a, a little detail for you guys, just as an aside about the Spanish Civil War. There was a there was a, a fighter. There were a lot of people. George Orwell famously went to fight uh, for the Republicans in the Spanish Civil War. But there was a woman called Simone Weil, who was a French philosopher. Um, so this this is brilliant. Uh, Simone Weil added herself for a while to the anarchist columns of Buenaventura de Ruti. Though fellow fighters feared she might inadvertently shoot them because she was short sighted and tried to avoid taking her on missions. By the account of her biographer, Simone Petremont, Vey was evacuated from the front after a matter of weeks because of an injury sustained in a cooking accident. Jesus. (laughs) Her trip to 
I'm going to join the Spanish Revolution. <laughs> she goes out there and they're like, Christ, she can barely see. It just Don't like, let her near just a gun. fucking Mr. Beaned it the whole time. <laughs> she, oh my God, Mr. she Bean wasn't it. allowed to go. Like, Hayley Selassie specifically said, no blind people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and only people who can cook. I know. Was, she, was in the, she went to the wrong revolution. He didn't draw, make the bar very high. Do you know what I mean? Well, to be like, fair, she was in the Spanish Civil, civil War. As long as you're, <laughs> as long as you're not infirm, blind, or you know, oh, completely man. hopeless. She Come could, along. couldn't shoot and walked into a cooking pot or something. I just think that's that's a, a, quite the tale of a, of a trip to, to help out. Man, oh yeah, man. Spanish Civil War, obviously very very again a very interesting of its time thing where it was a, it was kind of this war between national you know, fascists and con- con- communists. Yeah, <laughs> so it was quite unusual to see who was on the side of the witch, you know, because it was you know, Italy and Germany and, and Portugal were supporting fascism, um, whereas the Soviet Union, Greece, sort of Mexico, uh, and France actually were supporting communism. Yeah. There was a little bit of communism going in France at the time, and they were sort of, you know, thinking that that might be the way forward. Certainly, you know, it was, it was an interesting time historically when these governments were coming up with these new ideas and communism was certainly taking root um, yeah, you know, nationalism much the same as it is. They were, nowadays, they were, but... they were on the ground floor of introducing the concept of doing a little bit of trolling. I think that's uh, <laughs> that's that's all it was. It was just a little, just a, just little, a, little, bit one, a little bit of trolling. Yeah. yeah, really terrible time. These wars all caused terrible, terrible things to happen. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. It left awful. Spain in an absolute disastrous shape. Yeah. But um, um, let me just say, what well, you were talking about, people going over and volunteering, and how that was sort of of its time. I think in terms of. Uh, uh, philosophers and writers that there, there seemed to be a lot more of them like acting very politically i think it was a time of great political upheaval the the 30s uh and the 40s yeah and i mean again, certainly and fascism seemed to be um very very popular at the time right right and I think but there seemed because... to be a lot of people whose job was oh i'm a philosopher yeah like and, and in a fairly fairly historically well-known way and there was still a lot of time and effort spent i'm sure there are still philosophers today i know there are but i feel like i don't know how many of them would go and fight in a civil war i mean for example the kurds when they were fighting against al-qaeda there were western volunteers who went out there and just joined the fight like that was a thing that actually happened i don't know if any celebrities did no um because i think we tend to to have a different kind of celebrity this these days and rather than being someone who writes a nice book about philosophy it's someone who's got a six pack and was on. I feel like a Ro- I feel like Ross Kemp should have, you know, like get Ross Kemp. It, I'm yeah. on the front line of the battle against. The, yeah, the I mean, Spanish it would have done. It would have <laughs> would have pushed his career even further. You know what I mean? Like, it, it just get, just get Phil Mitchell out there. Yeah, yeah, just get. Well, the Mitchell he actually said everyone that can bring a spear to get to the front. So that's why I'm here. <laughs> Man, he's the. Uh, do you know what? I watched a little bit of EastEnders over the holidays because my wife follows it and. Uh, <laughs> Man, Phil Mitchell is still in that show. He's still <laughs> still banging babes. That's what the, he's. It's crazy. I know he's, he's, he's in the show for so. He's in it so long that every time a new female character enters the show, Phil Mitchell has to have sex with her. That is I in know. his contract, a hundred percent. Dude is like eighty years old now. I'm not yeah, even joking. Yeah, he's a million. Yeah, he's just so he's 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 an old guy. <laughs> And you're right. He gets all the young. I grabbed babes. this young tar I found in the bar. <laughs> exactly. Brought with me to cook and clean. Exactly. But he has so many skeletons in the closet. Like uh, I think the the latest is now he's about to go to jail because they found out that, or somebody found out that he killed their brother or something like years ago and told the in police. EastEnders, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So now he's trying to he's trying to make it. His his current his current bit of fluff is is Cat Slater. I don't know if you remember her. Yeah. But they're they're together sure. now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. A Total little, a little, East, a little EastEnders update for you there, just in I case Googled you needed Kat it. I Cat Slater, yeah. and the first result is Cat Slater Total Slag. Yeah, well, that's it. That's in the show. <laughs> that's what she gets called a lot. She's like, you, you slag. slag. Yeah. You slag. Yeah. So there, there's a list of the longest serving characters. Yeah. Uh, Ian Beale's got to be show. one of them. Ian Beale, be- according to Wikipedia, is the longest serving because he was, he was in there. At the it very, was very Dot start. Cotton, right? But she's. Pretty much she retired perished, now. Yeah. So Ian Beale oh, is no, the I longest think serving character and the only remaining original character to Did appear she actually die? continuously. The, the lady who plays Dot Cotton? Yeah. Yeah, I believe she did. I don't Let's know if she did, you know. Yeah. June Brown uh, is. She's 94. Yeah, yeah. No, wow. she's still going, but she's not in the show anymore. They've no, like, she's not. Yeah. They basically, like, in the show, I think they've written her into, like, a... 
you know, like a retirement home or something like that. Like she's still coming to there. fight Al Qaeda. The only <laughs> unmarried woman I could find was Dot Cotton. Yeah. I bought her along. Oh, she survived several world wars already. Oh, she's a veteran. Oh, she can hold a spear. I've hurt myself on this cooking pot. The heavyweight uh, soap stars, you know, of uh, of, of of Britain. Her, Dot Cotton, and what about Deidre Barlow from Coronation Street? Both heavy smokers yeah, yeah. where their voices have dropped about it. 10 octaves, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> over the years. <laughs> it's just insane, isn't here, it? Here are some other names for EastEnders fans. Sharon Watts, yeah. been in the show since, in several births. She's still since going, yeah, yeah. She comes and goes, yeah. And she is the only woman on the show who can claim to have bedded and wedded both Phil and Grant Mitchell. Yes. So she's she's fucked both Mitchells. Well, yeah. Kathy Beale. Legend. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Kathy Beale. Kathy Beale uh, was presumed dead. That's Ian Beale's mum. Yeah. Was presumed dead in the show and then came back, I think. Oh, it's so she be was like... in it 1985 to 2000. Yeah. And then there was a 15 year hiatus. Yes. And then she came back in 2015. That's right. Yeah. About that. Yeah. Martin Fowler, another lifer, it says here, Martin has been a part of the EastEnders family for as long as the soap has existed. Well, His the, original run was 85 to 2007, then he yeah. came back in 2015. Different actors playing the same Call role, though. Go to the picture though. here, he runs the fruit and veg store. Yeah, he runs yeah. the fruit and veg store. It was, it's, it's, it, they've had like two different actors for Martin Fowler, though. It was like, uh, it was a different actor when he was like a teenager and stuff, and then he went away for a bit and then came back, and now it's a, a, a different guy uh, is acting the, the role. So, so Sharon Watts was, was on... From 10 years, from 85 to 95, came back from 2001 to 2006, and then came back again. So she's been married to like four or five different characters, but her most recent stint had, she was engaged, had a painkiller addiction, she was still <laughs> married course. to Phil, course, she was attacked yeah. in her own bar, oh, yeah. she met her biological father, had an affair with a guy called Keanu, was blackmailed by her business partner... Uh, who then died. Uh, she then divorced Phil, gave birth to Keanu's son, but her other son died in a boat accident because of Ian Beale attempted to kill himself. Yeah. And then later she became the landlady of the Queen Vic, married Again. and divorced yeah. Ian Beale, uh, and then poisoned him. But find out she had <laughs> he that she has a half-brother, so she then had a fling with someone else, and then found out that she has a granddaughter, yeah. uh, who she's now raising. Yeah. Amazing. So yeah, that is, that is just so... Such an amazing, and that's the most recent. That's the that most is, recent. That is yeah, the yeah. most recent plot. Yeah. Luckily, most of that went on during the era of uh, DVDs because that was the only way to medicate all, through all the pain, right? Like just to right put on a DVD, love. <laughs> <laughs> Get me a DVD. <laughs> like that's all they do in that show. Oh, I've got time. his CSI Miami oh. season seven. Will that do? Oh, that'll be great, darling. Get get put the kettle on as well. Oh, oh yeah. on a DVD. <laughs> 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 fucking EastEnders, eh? So here's Every another time. character. There's a character called Winston, uh, who was a black guy that works on a stall. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. And he was in the background for since... <laughs> <laughs> they've missed they've mistyped on this article uh 1895 is apparently when he first <laughs> did on the show uh, uh, obviously meant to be 1985 but he never spoke he never spoke and then he finally spoke in 2017 and he said to to uh, mick carter cheers pal that was it that that's was his it line. yeah there's another um there's another actress that's been like kind of like a, a almost like an extra actress for the longest time and it's uh the the woman who tends the bar at the queen vic tracy she has, oh, yeah. I, I think she's got a handful of spoken lines throughout like the 30 or yeah, so yeah. years that she's been on the show or whatever. But uh, the thing is, you get she's paid still more. There. Like there's, yeah, there's yeah. a base baseline rate, isn't there? I think if you have a speaking role, I'm sure someone that works in the industry will say that this is not true. But the way you get your equity card is to have a speaking role in a, um, a TV show or a play or something. Yeah, like yeah. That. Otherwise, you count as an extra. I feel like I feel like if you're doing that, you are you're basically like the the Greg from uh, Succession, right? You just like you just turn up to all <laughs> this stuff, the Greg. <laughs> sitting by the window, not talking and stuff. Oh poor man, Greg. yeah. Poor. So Sonia Jackson, there's another character that's been in the show for a long time. Yeah. Uh, Pete, Peter Beale, who was a, a young lad, played yeah. by many, many a fella, apparently. Yeah. yeah. Uh, ben Mitchell, who's obviously one of the other young characters. Billy Mitchell. Billy who has is, been in it He looks like ever, a yeah. guy that would nick your wallet if you looked away for two seconds. He's been in the show for so long, it's crazy. Janine Butcher yeah. is back. I don't know if you remember Janine Butcher, Frank Butcher's no. um, daughter. 
um she married barry um this is like 20 years ago or (laughs) whatever she's back again now as well there's a guy in my chat called barry from eastenders barry from eastenders yeah yeah Yeah, that was he well barry from eastenders was a character in um in extras you remember yeah yeah but it was played by barry Barry from eastenders yeah Yeah, yeah. i know yeah it was it was it was clever it's good oh my god um there are some some, honestly this whole thing it's a it's a nightmare yeah apologies Um, to um anybody who's listening not not uh (laughs) not in the world of soap operas specifically Brit- british soap operas like you probably don't know what the fuck we're but, talking I mean, about specifically but... i would say yeah, eastenders yeah. is like as much as people talk about coronation street and stuff like that eastenders seems to be the the biggest i'd say uh, i think so uh, yeah well i mean cory has been around for a very long time but it's it's our house shit, favorite for and sure, it always but... has been yeah. but eastenders is if i had to watch a soap and i i've i have had to when i was living at home my mum watched them all when she comes yeah. up here she watches EastEnders, Coronation Street, Emmerdale. Uh, those, those three. Those are the, those are the big dogs. Yeah. And Emmerdale Farm had one good episode, which is when oh, a plane crashed man. on the village. What an episode! Yeah, what I remember app- that one. I remember. I was there. I remember exactly. If you, if you remember exactly where you were during that episode of uh, Emmerdale, um, I don't know what that says about you, honestly. But uh, okay, I- let's t- talking about British cultural things. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait. Remember? Before you mention anything, <laughs> very exciting news about British cultural things. Guess what? What? No, I can't guess. I, I can't How am I guess. supposed to guess, guess what that? starts tonight at nine o'clock on BBC One, baby? Oh, the Apprentice. Oh, shit. The yeah, fucking it's Apprentice. Back. It's back. Oh my god. Oh, I can't no. believe it. I'm so excited. Oh man. The Apprentice. My this favorite. Was it? The Apprentice. It's my so favorite much. hate watch. I love it. Oh man. It's the, the... This was my my last last weekend. This was my reaction to the return of the Masked Singer. Which is my guilty watch. Oh. I love The Masked Singer. It's so good. Wait, the, oh, I God. watched one where it was like, it wasn't The Masked Singer, or maybe it was, but it was like, they had to guess whether the person really was a singer or not, based on like what they looked like, and they had like this oh, bio yeah, and yeah. stuff. And then, so like, they were all like, they would all lip sync a song just to give people an idea of like how they would perform and stuff. But like they knew that it was being lip synced or whatever, but then it was up to like the judges to sort of see, Oh, you know, is that person really going to be good at singing or or whatever? And then they would come on after and, and actually sing. And the ones who couldn't sing were like, really over exaggeratingly bad at, oh, at right, singing, right, you know, right. like it was, it's, it was like terrible karaoke sort of thing. And then it was always like, but man, fucking Jimmy Carr is like on all those shows now. Like, I guess oh, he's just oh, trying yeah. to like, uh, I, I don't know, like weasel his way into like, like prime time or something. But fuck me, man. Like it, it's like, it's like a YouTube thumbnail. That guy, his like fucking reaction expression all the time. Like Jesus. Well, the, the mass singer is that the, there are two, two main entertaining things to it. First of all, the costumes are amazing and bizarre. But second of all, the stupidity of the panel, which is Jonathan Ross, Rita Ora, uh, who are the other two people? Uh, Davina McCall and some guy that I, I don't know who he is. Oh, good lord, Davina he's a comedian McCall, or something. Yeah, that is quite a mixed it is. bag, isn't it? It is. Just but it's, they're, they're so their guesses are so bad, and some of them are so optimistic that the other week someone was singing and they said, "I think this could be Zendaya," and I'm like, "Guys, <laughs> Zendaya is not doing the Masked Singer on ITV. <laughs> like, there is an American Masked Singer. If she's going to do one, it would be that." <clears throat> she's not going to pop up on fucking ITV. Like, I'm sorry, team, but it's not Zendaya. It's just, it's yeah. just hilarious. But yeah, it's really, really good. Man, I think fucking ITV need to wind their neck and fucking have a day off. You know, like what a stupid <laughs> station, eh? <laughs> I hate it. I fucking, um, I fucking hate, hate it. it. It's just the worst. And I'm right. a celebrity. Get me out of here. Still fucking going. No, exactly. I mean, come but, on. But, I mean, eh? the, like... one of the contestants that was unveiled at the weekend uh, was Heather, the lead singer of M People. And oh, she has, wait. Right? Is it Lighthouse that... Family or M People where the M-People. lead singer sounds a little bit like Phil Collins, like on a, you know, like after, after so like a night M-People out? So M People was a female vocalist. Oh, right. I think Lighthouse People was Okay, a male so it was vocalist. M People. Search for the hero. Exactly. But, that- but her voice was like, you got to search for the hero. Had this weird. The hero in the so so when she when she um when she sang on the Mars Singer, she did a different voice. Oh. So she had to kind of disguise her singer voice, but it just meant that she couldn't sing what? very well. Yeah. What's because, the point? Because, <laughs> because, her, because her voice is too <laughs> obvious. <laughs> That's the only thing. 
thing that <laughs> people it. have. It's the first. It's the first major trigger of 2022. Lewis has lost it. <laughs> the masked they, they, singer is on. the culprit. They, they have, but that's the whole thing. Why they don't see you properly? They have other. How they are have, people supposed to guess? No one knows who she is anyway. They have Why are they going to take that mask off? And everyone's going to be like, who? <laughs> no one knows who that is. Man, Lewis, I think you just got to search for the hero inside yourself, and then they you'll... get other clues. Like they say, I did this, and I was that, and they're sort of cryptic clues God, along the way. It's so cryptic, though. Who knows this? I don't know. I I guess I've heard of M people vaguely, but I would have no idea who was in it. Whether they were like women or men, like what kind of music they did. I like God. Yeah. Like it's how am I supposed to like. How old is it as well? M people, God. the nineties. Oh the 90s. yeah, it's, it's so big, old. Big time nineties. Yeah. I mean, I'm not expecting them to get fucking Zendaya. She's no. obviously doing like t- twenty movies and actually everything that's, that's good. She's, there's no way she's in the UK doing it. But, uh, but at least like make an effort. Like we've been through this before. We went through the list of the Masked Singer from last time. And I, I knew like two of them. Oh, I got. I got okay. I'll, I'm gonna. Okay. I'm gonna level. I, full transparency. I have no idea who Zendaya is. They're already is. Oh, okay. I- impossible to guess from their sheer obscurity. They don't need to obfuscate it even further yeah. by Ob- disguising their fucking voice. Obfuscate. Obfuscate. Whatever. It's obfuscate. Yeah. But I just Ob- love. Ob- don't <laughs> obfuscate. That's how angry he is. <laughs> <laughs> obfuscate. Oh, oh, I've God. always said obfuscate. it wrong. I'm That's saying right. it wrong. Yeah. It's some. It's just oh, a little God. ski whiff. That's everybody's got words like that <laughs> you know like epitome penelope like there's a couple of couple of words yeah. out there oh, that... speaking of words who's been playing word uh no, no, not me. i've heard you? i've heard um murmurs of, of a you wordle. will have seen it on social media like a series of boxes yeah white yellow and green and it, yeah. it'll show how long it took someone and how many guesses they had it is a really good game and i you only get to play it once per day which is Really frustrating, but at the same time, I'm like, this is good because now I, I wake up, I do my wordle. I've you only I've only heard about it through people doing it whilst waiting for uh, matches to pop, cues to pop in Dota. Like yes, if you're in a stack, you people crack a wordle. Out, yeah, yeah, people do a wordle. Yeah, but I I myself have not done one wordle. It's mm. good. It's too it's scared. Good. Apparently, the guy made it for his girlfriend because she likes word games, and then oh, it just right. kind of blew up and on social kind of, media. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, the the key is, and this is genius, sharing the wordle that just shows how many. Guests as it took you and how you got there that's a really nice little social media trick um very simple very recognizable very clever well done wordle shout out to wordle shout out to wordle it's very addictive Big props um, to wordle you can only do three minutes a day he doesn't want you to do any more than that all right it's amazing maybe this we should do strange. a new set now it's 2022 let's time to change the format a bit let's we need a new segment called like just it could be a short one like like we just did about wordle but we, we call the segment big props and uh every every okay. time we mention we something get one that we big like props that yeah we, we okay. give we give them big props you know okay. like we're going big props on wordle our 12 this. viewers you know like the optics are going to look great uh when uh when you know the 12 viewers are all talking about this on socials and uh you know just uh, driving up a lot of uh clicks and traffic and and shit like that it's going to be amazing and we're going to make so much money before we continue cupid works hard in february but our friends at manscaped are working harder than ever to ensure your valentine's day is one to remember yeah. don't turn this day of romance into independence day and get in control <laughs> With their performance package 4.0, oh, which yeah. includes the latest signature lawnmower, uh, you, you can join 4 million men who trust Manscaped with their packages uh, at manscaped.com slash Triforce for 20% off and free shipping, including us. Oh. Uh, we are all Manscaped men. Yeah. If you want some romance in your pants, sort that bush and pound that tush. Let's go, Manscaped. Oh my gosh, that's red hot. Exactly. Jeez, I don't have anything. Contrary to popular belief, love is not blind when you can't see through the love jungle. <laughs> right, good. Sorry, I like Very that. Very nice. Very nice. Manscaped has you covered this Valentine's Day. Get the gift that you and your date will appreciate. Manscaped.com com slash triforce for our exclusive offer 20 percent off and free shipping i got one i got uh, one i got one go on. okay. get rid get rid of that muff and enjoy some stuff baby <laughs> let's go i'm glad i get you in on these ads and uh, uh manscaped.com slash triforce thank you very much 
We all shop online and we've all seen that promo code field taunt us at checkout. But thanks to Honey, I have been using it to add coupon codes randomly when I've been buying stuff. Um, it's a free shopping tool that scales the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart automatically. Uh, there's over 30,000 stores supported, ranged from tech, gaming products to food delivery services. You can just install it through your browser. It finds coupons and just use them automatically. Mm, hell yeah. I can recommend it. I've been using it. I don't have to I don't have to keep all the coupon papers from the backs of magazines and newspapers now. I can I can digitize my coupon uh, obsession. Yeah, get into the 21st century, 22nd, uh, finally. 20th century are we in? Get into the modern yeah, century. Get into this one. <laughs> Whatever it is. <laughs> Whichever one and we're in. have Honey installed. It's got 17 million members and has saved them $2 billion already. So yeah, you can install it. It's free or you can go to honey.com slash Triforce. That's honey.com slash Triforce uh, where you can get it. And uh, there's also a link, joinhoney.com slash Triforce to get Honey for free. I like well, there you go. So join honey.com slash Triforce to get honey for free. Have I found the right one or have I found some alternative one? If you just know. type in Wordle. Is it Fat Cat Studios? No, it's wordlepowerlanguage.co.uk. It's that top top result. You click that and there's Wordle. Wordle. And it oh. should be a grid of a six by five grid or a five by six grid, depending on Is it on Android? I don't think it's it on is. Android. It is. It's, it's not an app. It's just I just well, do it on my big, phone. Uh, I just big, go to the website. A big congrats to Wordle for being uh, the the very first uh, big props winner on the Triforce I'm podcast 2022. Congratulations. Congratulations, it's, Wordle. I, I well it's done. not an app. It's not an app. It's just a website. It's not an app. Oh, it's a website. Yeah. It's you not just an go, app. No, it's not an app. Don't download any apps. I'm sure they're all crooked. Right. That's where I fucked up. Wordle of Thrones. Age of It may well be an app. Wordle. I don't want to speak. I don't want to speak for Wordle. It may well be an app. But all I'm saying is... I'm sure that as soon as anything gets popular, a bunch of shitty no, you're right. This gr is this grifters is, a, out there go and there's get a, a shitty app. Yeah, there's dude. a shitty app already. There Probably you go. nothing to do um, with the world. If, there, if it is, I apologize. But until I can confirm, we hereby it, revoke the big prop award no, uh, for the no, week because no. we found some some grifter apps. For <laughs> See, I'm like a boomer. I've like uh, I've already got confused. See, You've already installed a virus. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so updates. Do you want me to share some updates for this week? Sure. Um, updates well, actually, about what? One, one thing I looked at, British culture-wise, do you remember J.R. Hartley? J.R. Hartley. No. Yeah. Did you remember that? No. Go on, tell Sips what so it is. So it was, it was an ad for the Yellow Pages in the 90s. I oh, think right. maybe, I didn't live maybe over late here in the 80s 90s. and 90s. No, yeah. that's fine. But basically, it was an old fella going to bookshops right. and saying, do you have a book, uh, Fly <laughs> Fishing by J.R. Hartley? And the guy would shake his head and he'd go to the next shop. Do you have a little shit their head? And then he gets home and he's all, oh, and he sees it's the Yellow Pages. It's all dejected. Reaches right. for it and opens it up and finds a bookshop and he says, you do. You do have it. Ah, yes. My name, it's J.R. Hartley. <laughs> he, he closes the book and he sits back and he's like, ah, oh, there's still a copy of my book about fly fishing out there. And it was a beautiful yes. ad. It was very well done. And it became a big sort of cultural thing. And everybody knew it. Right. It was very, it very famous. It ad. became a very big cultural influence in the UK. And there was another Yellow Pages ad at the time, which was when there was a kid using it to climb up onto and kiss someone under the mistletoe. Yeah. Stuff and like that. Right? And the there one where like... he'd scratched. This was the one me and my mates always remember. The one where he uh, he has a party and he he panics because the place is a mess and his parents are coming home that day. He, uh, he calls up a cleaning service and they come around. And then at the last second, he notices that there's, a, there's like a statue has all weird stuff and there's like there's a scratch on his uh, parents varnished beautiful antique table gets that repaired but then he notices something else just i can't remember what it is i think there's like a statue has makeup on it or something like that you uh, i can't remember. it's been 30 years since i saw the advert but that was a big one as well but the jr hartley one was the main one there were a the few. main one that stuck around. The ha Hamlet Cigars was a big one as well. So the, obviously the... Fly Fishing by J.R. Hartley wasn't a real book, but what happened was huge amounts of people requested the book, thought it was real, and as a result, it became real. Right. Okay. Well, they made a fly fishing by J.R. Hartley. So, in so, so 1983 was when the advert came out, but 1991, it was still so strongly in the British consciousness that they actually got an angling author called Michael Russell to write Fly Fishing by Memories of Angling Days, right? right by J.R. Hartley. Uh, right. <laughs> and it was published as that. Uh, so it's a sort of spoof book, but kind of like written by someone who did 
know about fishing and had written fishing books before. It was basically a kind of humorous book, but intensely British and not great. But it sold like 150,000 copies that's in that good. year yeah. in Christmas, which was huge. Yeah, that it was would, the top that, of the bestseller that list. Would, that's like a, that's, that, that would be uh, like a, a, a very sort of typical Christmas gift, right? Like you'd get some like a like Yeah, a kind jokey, of like a semi-joke. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But obviously what happens, it was so popular that, that the guy wrote two more sequels. Oh, my God. Uh, J.R. Hartley casts again and golfing. By J.R. Hartley. Oh my! And and did <laughs> right? those ones not do as well? So they were they were shit, but yeah. it doesn't matter because they they did fine. But it turns out that by by now in um 2011, so so this was 10 years ago. Um, they announced that there was there was this rare sort of the most sought after out of print books. That copy, the 1991 copy of J.R. Hartley's Fly Fishing, which was obviously only made on one print run for this Christmas, was then one of the most sought after out of print books and people were looking for it again. Wow. Jesus. So it's come full circle. Yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. It was an advert about a book that was out of print, <laughs> okay, that then became a book that then became out of print that then people are still looking for oh. now. Well, Jesus you know how you can Christ. find it. Pick up a copy of the Yellow Pages. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which oh. doesn't, doesn't exist anymore, I don't think. I don't think the Yellow Pages. Mm. Does it exist as an actual book? Or is it just Yell? Is that what Yell.com is? I think I think it's online Yell, now. Yeah, I think Yell is, is yeah. It's like trustatrade.com or whatever they fucking use now to find someone who Listen, can, check a maybe. trade is no joke. That is a very, which, very good website. I use it every one time. Which use? And check a trade, I didn't know this, when the guys, the guys that are on check a trade to advertise their business, they have to pay a subscription fee to check a trade to be on the website, fair enough. But you have to pay for each area. And they oh. divide the areas up quite meanly, shall we say. Right, okay. So right. You, you've got to pay. If, you, if you're if you in southwest London, you have to pay a lot of money every year to be to have it listing. To get listed under in, the category, under the place, oh, under yeah. the... Yeah, so if oh I search God. for Plumber Twickenham, you have to have paid, like, I think it's 1,500 quid or something like that. Jeez. That, that my, my guy told me. Just to be listed in Twickenham. And then another one for this That's and another one That's such a typical that. thing that a tradesman would tell you about, right? Like, how yeah, much expense moment, he's like, got. Yeah, yeah, you wouldn't believe it, mate. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It, it does bring in a fair bit of work, to be fair. But fix the fucking pipes. Cost me pipes. a bloody load. <laughs> cost me a load. You're like, just fix the boiler. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm fixing the boiler. <laughs> I just want to fucking moan about my expenses at the same time. Like, come on. Problem is, Mate, I've got no tools. I can't afford them. Can't afford them because I have to buy, spend all the money on bloody check trade, in it? <laughs> this is exactly what it's like. <laughs> oh, fuck's sake. So, speaking of fake novels, um, I started to look into it further. And Bodega. No. So, so there was this. So, basically, what happened was Bodega. the way bestseller lists were com compiled in the 1950s were based on, you could go into a bookshop and say, you could request a copy. You didn't have to pre-order it or buy it or put any money down. You could just go in and say, do you have this book? And they that would get put onto a list, a note list, and then that list would be sent to the New York Times. And that was what was used to compile the bestseller list. Right. So oh, in fact, hello. all you had to do was go in and get say- Get a bunch of people to go exactly. into bookstores. So this this late night like, raconteur, who was called Shep, quite popular, Gene, Gene Shepard Jr., um, he told everyone to go into the store and request a fictional novel that he'd made up called I Libertine. Yeah. Um, or I Libertine by Frederick R. Ewing. Okay. Which sounds like a real book. And so he went, so, so everyone of course did this and it sort of got a bit viral mm. and it, it put on, it was put on the New York Times bestseller list. Okay. This completely fictional book. And so what happened was then, of course, bookstores and uh, publishers became interested in actually fulfilling this demand and making this book. And so this one publisher, Ian Ballantine, decided that he had to smash this book out right now to capitalise on the success. So he got permission from Shep to do it. He spent the entire next few days writing the novel and f eventually fell asleep, exhausted, un with the book unfinished. In one after trying to meet the deadline in one marathon typing session, he hell. collapsed. His wife took over, finished it, and they put it out. <laughs> wow. What the hell? <laughs> um, and obviously, all the proceeds went to charity. Um, but it's kind of like it's kind of dumb. Apparently, it's like. A, a, a book closely based on the life of someone called Elizabeth Chudley. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah. 
who was a, a, a the Countess of Bristol, apparently, some some courtier in sort of seventeenth, eighteenth century. Elizabeth Chudley. I'm guessing I it's am a lot. Countess of like, Bristol. Um, what's that fucking <laughs> Netflix? The sexy uh, history the show. No, no, the sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Presented the, by Elizabeth the sexy Chudley. History show. I am it's Elizabeth like Chudley. Sexy Downton Abbey. I understand uh, you are the Witcher. We have many gloobers and squibbles roaming around Bristol. What's it called? It's like like br- 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 broad Broadner bright, Broad bright, Church. Bro- no, Broadchurch <laughs> Broadmead. <laughs> it's called Broadmead or something. Yeah, Broadmead. I can't remember what it's called. You know the one with all the sexy people in 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 historical times. Gossip anyway, girl, it's, the, the Witcher. <laughs> the I'm still <laughs> sticking with the Witcher. <laughs> no, people will know what I mean. Oh, Fucking hell. So so yeah, it's 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 <laughs> shit. But there was an, an another book that came sort of before this. Um, so it was kind of this this, this idea previously because um, God, what well, I can't even. I, I was looking around um, and I found another one. I have to find it in a second. But there was this, 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 uh, this has happened a few times, right? Like there was this time in the nineties when there was this company called Publish America um, and they were sort of a vanity press. So they were, they were kind of, the idea was that you would send them your manuscript, they would accept it, they'd accept all of them and then you'd pay to get hundreds of books made. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so there was this thing called Publish America that was, it, what it said it was a traditional publisher, but it was kind of a scam. Yeah. Um, whereas it just, you know, when, when you've written your book, you send it off to publishers and they would always accept and you'd be delighted that they've accepted you and are publishing your book. You'd be like, oh, I'm going to be an I'm author a, now. I'm a uh, published author, actually. I have 10,000 copies of my book in my garage right now. Would you like one? So, no, no thanks. So, exactly. Yeah. So what was happening was a lot of people were getting scammed and this group of authors got together to try and write the the worst book they could just to prove that Publish America would accept anything without checking, right? So they wrote this book. They got 25 edit- uh, writers together to write this book called Atlanta Nights. Uh, it had... I, non- I, it's so, so basically it had the same segment of outline written twice in non-identical chapters. So chapters 13 and 15 were the same story, but written by different people. Chapter 21 was missing. Uh, chapters 4 and 17 were word for word identical. Chapters. There were two chapter twelves uh, <laughs> at different areas in the book. There was a chapter written inverted commas by a computer program that spouted out random text uh, based <laughs> on previous chapters. Characters change gender and race, die and reappear without explanation. There's no consistent spelling or grammar or formatting. The initials of characters who were named in the book spelled out the phrase "Publish America is a vanity press." So apparently. They also accepted another author's manuscript that featured the same thirty pages repeated ten times. <laughs> That's, That's right. Brilliant. Oh my so god! So it's 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 just gibberish. Um, and then obviously uh, they got accepted and they declined to be published, of course. And then um, they, they, then they released it as a as a print on demand for people to buy with uh, with funds going to charity as well. Um, but yes, so it, it's kind of a a, a silly idea. But there was a previous book that had happened um, with this sort of thing, like, like a hoax book called Naked Came the Stranger, which you might have heard of. Um, so Naked Came the Stranger was was a thing that happened in 1969, where there was this one guy, nice. McGrady, who worked for a newspaper. And he thought that the bestsellers list was dominated by porn. Right. Um, there was this like pulpy porn sexy shit going on. And he thought that, look... If I just want to get a book on the bestseller list, all I do is write some sort of sexy thing and put a naked woman on the cover. Right. And it will just go on to the top of the bestseller list because there were these authors of the time who were really dominating and he was he was sort of sick of it. Um, so he hired or just like got involved with all of the journalists at his work. He asked everyone to write a chapter. So like 20 men and five women all wrote a sexy chapter of this book. Some of them were too good. So they had to like edit them a lot to make them shitter. It was just like a complete hodgepodge. Um, he hired, he got his like sister in law to um, take be the author and be this author Penelope Ash, right? Um, but basically, it's just the synopsis of it is that Jilly and William Blake are the hosts of a popular New York City breakfast radio chat show, the Billy and Jilly Show. And uh, the Billy and Jilly Show. Jillian finds out that her husband is having an affair. 
and decides to cheat on him with a series of different men from their Long Island neighbourhood. <laughs> of uh, course she does, yeah. Most of the book is taken up by small snippets of Jilly's adventures with a variety of men from a reg- from a progressive rabbi to a mobster. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened was, of course, uh, McGrady was cynical and expected it to go to the top of the bestseller list, and it did. It's, you know, sold you know, hundreds of thousands of copies, 400,000 copies, and um, you know, was 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 they were on talk shows and all sorts of stuff about this. But then it was made into a, a movie, um, which 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 was sort of a sexy, erotic, like one of the ones you get on silly, Channel Five after midnight in the old days. Exactly one yeah. of those shit movies. So what actually happened was as well the they took it to a publisher and the publisher um, was a sort of independent publisher known for controversial books. He stole. The cover photo, which was a sort of kneeling nude woman with her ass to the camera, f- from a Hungarian nudist magazine, and the the model of photographer later found out that it had been used and demanded payment and were paid, but obviously later, um, it was one of those hope they don't notice, see if we can get away with it type things. <laughs> but wow. yeah, the movie was a thing, and it was this this I don't know like this. It was started as a, a sort of a joke or a hoax or some sort of yeah. deliberate something deliberately bad. You know, they deliberately made it shit. And oh, I've just... got I've got some lines from Atlanta Nights if you want to hear this. Sure, because these this is good. Uh, the longtime security guard saluted the pair as they passed. What lucky people! He thought, so young and rich, they can afford to live here. Not like me. I have to live across town and wear a uniform and salute the young rich kids who make more money in a minute than I can make in my whole life. <coughs> I think that's great. <laughs> and then, He's dying. <clears throat> wait, sorry. It's making you ill. It is. This is. This one's even better. As he held those big jiggle breasts so close to him, <laughs> he whispered into her ear, I love those big old bejubbly jubblies. <laughs> <laughs> what a line. Oh, I that love is, those is, big old bejubbly jubblies. I love uh, those big old bejubbly jubblies. <laughs> that sounds like something Donald Trump would whisper into someone's oh, ear, man. doesn't it? Yes, it mean? does. Yeah. Yes, it does. But uh, just Fuck just yeah. some random fella just says it to him. Hey, by the way, I love those big old bejubbly jubblies. <laughs> bejubbly you know I mean? jubblies. They'd be, they'd be like, excuse me, Mr. President, just carry on. <laughs> One of the worst books ever written, apparently is The Eye of Argon. Yeah, I was just was reading about The Eye of Argon. A heroic <laughs> fantasy novella narrating the adventures of Grignir, a mighty barbarian and thief. It is considered one of the worst books ever. Um, one of the genre's most beloved pieces of appalling prose. Published, you mean. Um, one of the worst ever published. And the, the yeah. ending was missing. Infamously the ending awful. was missing from Scorch's copy and all the copies made of it. The last page of the story was on the last sheet of the fanzine, which had fallen off the staples. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. It ends, uh, the online version ends with the phrase, end of available copy. <laughs> Um, and the original copy that was found in the historical archives was also incomplete. So anyway, we don't even have it. But no mere transcription can give the true flavour of the original printing of the Eye of Argon. It was so bad. Um, just everything about it was bad. So, for example, here's here's a here's a line: eyeing a slender female crouched alone at a nearby bench, Grignir advanced, wishing to wholesomely occupy his time. Wholesomely, <laughs> wholesomely occupy his time. It's amazing. Here's a here's a bit where uh, a woman is trapped in a hole. You take hold of this rope, said the first soldier, and climb out from your pit, slut. Your presence is requested in another far deeper hell hole. Wow. The girl gasped a tortured groan from her clamped <laughs> lungs. Her sea blue eyes bulging forth from damp sockets. Cocking her right foot backwards, she leashed it desperately outwards with the strength of a demon possessed, lodging her sandaled foot squarely between the shaman's testicles. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is incredible. This is this is really bad. Um, by the surly beard of Miriritfic, Grignir kneels to no man. Grignir grappled with the lashing <laughs> flexor muscles of the repugnant body of a gargantuan, sorry, gargantuan brown hided rat, striving to hold its razor teeth from his juicy jugular. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> There's a lot of spelling, <laughs> spelling typos in it as well. Apparently. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's good, dude. 
So that's Man, what you've been reading. We should do. We should do. A, we should do a reading of this book. Man, I can't remember the last time I read read a book. It's been too long. Hey, oh by the way, uh, baby it just turned six months old yesterday. Oh, already. happy half birthday! Happy half birthday! Oh my god! You getting half a birthday cake? How does that work? Well, no, you don't. You don't. But it's a big milestone because from six months is when they start eating you just mush. High five. They like sit in a high chair. She can sit up a bit now. Like she'll have to sleep in a bigger bed. Like she'll have to come out of her little baby caught and stuff it's all it's all change you know she's teething they start making little noises yeah she well. talks a lot now she's like da, 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 constantly and stuff so did we talk about this last time i can't remember but basically i was thinking about this because i can't remember who i was talking to about it but they sort of said that having kids and watching them grow up is a little bit like um there's a, it's not grief exactly but or loss exactly but certainly they change so much year to year yes. that they're almost a different per person. They, they well, they are. Change. Yeah, they change yeah, a lot yeah. very quickly. Yeah. When you have a, when you have a dog, you know it's very consistent yeah. throughout its life. But when you have a baby, well, I mean, dogs you know, you, change you certainly, too. Though. You certainly might miss what they, you know, how cute and affectionate they were when they were three, yeah. or you know, when they were all questioning. Yeah, I mean, you miss it, but you age. always have that memory as well, though, <clears throat> which is really nice, you know. It's true, but it, it, I, I agree. It does feel like you're losing. It's, it's like you're losing someone you knew every time they grow up a bit more and it, it sort of comes in waves because you, you you don't see it like no. it's every day it's like it's very like putting gradual, on weight. Yeah. you know you don't notice putting on weight until you one day you look in the mirror like christ <laughs> what gonna, have i done so it, it sort of creeps <laughs> what up have I done to myself? <laughs> what am i doing so i feel like with kids it's the same like the, the other day i was talking to my 10 year old and she was using all kinds of big words i hadn't heard her use before yeah just it, she she's very very verbose and and she she's got a really amazing vocabulary for a 10 year old in my opinion um, and my mum is always commenting on it, and just things that my eldest talks about and knows about. And we're, you know, the, the, she's nearly thirteen, but she's she's just taken her off herself off to school. She goes to her friend's house. She goes into town and gets a cup of boba tea. All this kind of stuff. She's just off, and I I know in four more years she'll be going on holiday with her mates to somewhere. Yeah. And, you know, going all over the place, and and it'll be like she's a grown up, and then like she, she's thirteen now, and I think in 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 just eight years' time she'll be twenty one. Hopefully, she'll have finished university. She'll be starting work and all that kind of stuff, and I, it just blows my mind to think of that future because I know that at that point I will not be her primary concern. I won't be a primary caregiver no. in any way. Like I'll just be the reliable dad who helps her out, and you know, if she's short of cash, I'll help her out, and I'll drive her around sometimes or whatever. And she, you know, she's always have a, a place here. But it makes me very sad to know that essentially, when she's grown up and leaves, that I'm no longer. I've lost my function. Yeah. Like I feel like this has been my primary function for well for well over a decade. What is my primary function? I feel now? like that. Yeah. I'm I'm like a robot with nothing to you, do. You lose it, but I think it just changes as well. It's, and I think if you're close to your kids and they do leave, and and um, but you're still in touch with them or very much part of their lives somehow or another. Um, you've got potentially grandchildren to look forward to. Well, exactly. Helping them Back through the, the day, trials, and she would have been married with a kid, and you'd be do take it over the job from yeah. step one again. But you've also got, you know, just the trials and tribulations of being an adult. You know, like you, you'll, you'll probably find that you will um hear from them a lot more because you know for like advice and shit like that you know it's tough it's tough becoming an adult and and starting uh your your life as an adult and stuff too right did like you the, listen to your parents a huge amount when you were uh, a young adult yeah, probably more than i'd admit yeah like uh you know like you look back and you think oh they never taught me anything but obviously they taught me something i mean jesus like you don't you, you don't just figure it out by yourself you know what i mean like you that so sometimes they don't even need to say something like it's just like the you know that just the the example is enough i, I, thing, I remember know? deeply de and i still do deeply regret following some of the advice that i was given especially by my dad right about what to do with my life and i i should have ignored him yeah i should have absolutely ignored him so i, I feel like my job is not there to advise no. and say you got to do this you got to do that because for, you know that the the ideas that my parents had about the working world were well out of date by the time i started work sure it just but wasn't the way things were anymore
anymore. And I'm sure they'll be out of date when my kids start work. I'm not going to explain to them how to fucking get a job. No. And all this stupid shit that people talk about. My mum always and my dad always told me about job interviews and stuff. Like, like I was going to work for the fucking Mad Men. Like that kind of interview. Yeah. What do you do, son? You go in and smoke a cigar and slam a whiskey and shake a hand. I think that I think like <laughs> some advice is too specific to take, though, as well. Like you, you have to you have to filter it a little bit, right? Like, yeah, I, I think, think if it comes to things like boilers, uh, you know, what, what to look sure. for in a plumber. Yeah, you know, well, exactly. How to fix a floor tile, that kind of stuff I can help but, them out. But with. there's certain things where it's like, I think sometimes when you when you when you say that you're asking somebody for advice, you're not actually really asking for specific advice. You're just trying to get um, a, a broader sense of the the dilemma that you're in, right? So like you ask somebody for advice and they give you an alternative way of doing something. And sometimes just hearing that is enough for you to be like, okay, yeah, th that's not the way I want to do it. Right. But it's actually inspired me to do it this way that I want to do it or whatever. And I think that 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 can just be seen as like, yeah, that person helped me, even though yeah. you didn't specifically just take their advice verbatim you know what i mean like yeah so like uh, probably a lot of that happened with my parents like i don't think i i don't think i took anything that they said um overly seriously but again just by example and just ha was a factor, just sometimes right? having somebody to to speak to when i wasn't sure yeah. or whatever it was comforting right and it was enough to just get me through get me over a hurdle or whatever it's true yeah it's true. so like shout out to parents yeah that's uh yeah yeah big big uh big ups to um to, to all the parents out there but you'll have that role too as your kids get bigger right and probably now without realizing it there's a lot of stuff like that happening you know like i just tell them to be careful when they're crossing the road well well, like yeah. that's the, I, I tell them all that kind of shit. Like, don't do that. You'll fall and break your neck. Yeah. No, get get properly, out from there. You know, stop running. Don't run in the house. Like all all that stuff. But it all adds up in the end. Like it, you feel like you're a broken record nagging all the time. But honestly, like some of it does sink in. And, uh, you know, like you, you definitely shape your kids whether you want to or not. You know, like uh, just by being you. So I, I don't know. Yeah. It's like I, I don't think your your role ever ever like ceases to exist as long as that you're you're just close to them and they you you have some sort of hand in their in their life, you know? Like even if that's not the same as it is now when they're small because they, they right. depend on you fully, you know, it's just 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 be in there, you know? I think that's Well, I'll always be there for them. Well, there that's you go. I I think that's the best you can do. That's very good of yeah. you. Big yeah. big props to Flax for always being there, I think. <laughs> we've yeah. already done our big props. Well, I can't we've had join like the three. Ranks I mean, it's just a good day, you know. Wordle good day for props. And and me. That's <laughs> yeah. not what esteemed company. <laughs> you gotta celebrate yourself sometimes. So, uh, oh. And Wordle, of course. Oh, and Wordle. Alright, take it easy everyone. Yeah. Uh, we'll see you next, see you next week. Alright, bye. bye. bye.